Hi, I am going to teach you how to love physics, and that happens when you learn how to understand physics. I believe I have finally exhausted the mathematics of vectors, so now we can actually start some physics. And as if to illustrate just how important vectors are in physics, I am going to start off by introducing three very important vectors, position, velocity, and acceleration. These are the three vectors used to describe the motion of particles. So let's look at a particle in motion and see what sort of picture we can describe. Here we have a car driving along a road. At any moment in time, the car will be somewhere on the road. We can describe that location mathematically by the distance it is from an arbitrary origin. Let's just make this simple and have the origin at the midpoint of the road. Now the car may be on either side of the origin, so in order to identify a specific location, we also must note not only the distance, but also which side of the origin the car is on. If all we say is that the car is three meters from the origin, it may be in two places, either on the left or on the right. So now we are discussing a quantity, the location, and in order to define this quantity, we need two pieces of information, the distance from the origin and the direction away from the origin, whether it is to the left or to the right. Now, doesn't that sound like a vector? Well, it has a magnitude, the distance, and a direction, either to the left or to the right. So we can represent the location of the car by a vector whose tail is at the origin and whose head is at the location of the car. This vector we call position, and position has a magnitude, that is, the distance measured in meters from the origin and a direction as either to the left or to the right of the origin. Now the car may change its location as time passes. Let's say at time equal to zero seconds, the car's position is five meters to the left, and at time equal to three seconds, the car's position is one meter to the right. How much did the position change in those three seconds? Well, change of any quantity is the final value minus the initial value. The delta symbol will always be used to mean change, and mathematically, change of any specific value is the difference between the final value minus the initial value. So to get the change of position, we need to evaluate the final position minus the initial position. Both positions are vectors, so now we get to practice our vector addition. This problem only involves one dimension, so we won't have to worry about breakup into components. All we have to do is apply our sign convention and add the magnitudes according to that sign convention. So the vectors pointing to the right are positive and those pointing to the left are negative. The final position is one meter to the right. That makes positive one meter. The initial position is five meters to the left. That makes negative five meters. Notice that the sign convention is used to encode the direction. It means nothing in regards to the magnitude. So final minus initial is positive one meter minus negative five meters equal to positive six meters. The change of position is positive six meters. Positive encodes to the right, thus we have a change of position of six meters to the right, or using the sign convention, positive six meters. This change occurred over three seconds, so the average rate of change of position with respect to time for this interval was two meters per second to the right. Notice that this quantity has a magnitude, two meters per second, and a direction to the right. This makes it a perfect candidate to be called a vector, and indeed it is. It is called velocity. Average velocity for some interval is defined as the change of position divided by the time elapsed in that interval. This is the average because the car may have sped up real fast and then slowed down to make the trip in three seconds, or may have even started going backwards and then really sped up to reach that final position of one meter to the right in three seconds, or may have even gone at the constant velocity of two meters per second to the right for the entire three seconds. No matter what the case may be, if that car started at negative five meters and ended up at positive one meter three seconds later, the average velocity was two meters per second to the right, or positive two meters per second. Now, if you have taken differential calculus, you may recall the method of getting the instantaneous velocity at any particular moment in time. That is by the derivative of position with respect to time. 
Velocity is also a vector valued function of time, meaning that as time passes, the vector quantity velocity may change. We can define that change in the same way we did for change of position. Let's just say initially at t equal to zero seconds, the car is traveling with velocity equal to 10 meters per second to the left. And at time equal to three seconds, we measure the velocity to be five meters per second to the right. The change of velocity is delta velocity, and that delta means final velocity minus initial velocity. This is a vector equation, so let's get some more practice adding vectors. First, for the sign convention, the initial velocity is to the left, so it is negative 10 meters per second. The final velocity is 5 meters to the right, so it's positive 5 meters per second. Final minus initial gives positive 5 meters minus negative 10 meters per second equal to positive 15 meters per second. So the velocity changed by 15 meters per second over these three seconds. As we did for change of position, we will do for change of velocity and divide the change in velocity by the time elapsed. This is the definition of acceleration, or more specifically, the average acceleration over an interval. The units of acceleration are the units of velocity, meters per second divided by seconds. This gives the units of acceleration to be meters per second squared. If we want the instantaneous acceleration at any moment, then we use calculus again and take the derivative of velocity at that moment with respect to time. This was just a basic introduction to the notions of position, velocity, and acceleration. I didn't have time to cover everything, so make sure you read your textbook and go to your lectures for deeper conceptual understanding. Next time I will use these concepts introduced here to demonstrate how to approach physics problems, which is my focus for this series. Anyways, if you have any questions, just leave them down below.